Hello, I'm Virus610, and I thought I'd do a little tutorial on how I use the shading ink feature in a sprite. So I've made a little drawing here of a gray blob with some green blobs below it. If you'd like to try this yourself, along with the tutorial, I've left a link to the project in the description below. So the first thing you're going to want to do is select your pencil tool, then come up here to the ink button next to your brush size. There are a bunch of options here, but I'm going to be using shading. When you click that, you'll be prompted to select colors in the palette. You can do that in the palette on the left by shift-clicking individual colors, or by click and dragging to select an entire region of them. All colors that you select will show up in this bar up here. The order they show up in up top will be the same as the order they show up in on the left regardless of the order you selected the colors in. I've intentionally arranged the palette in a way that's inconvenient for this tutorial for demonstration reasons. Notice how there's a super dark blue on the left in the lighter side of my palette. You can move that by simply clicking and dragging the color to the desired position in the palette. And let's say you decide you don't want that white color you can remove that by clicking and dragging the color outside of the palette. There's a weird behavior where if you press Control, it will revert the palette back to what it was before you modified it. To avoid this, just click anywhere in the canvas area, and your shading ink palette will be locked in. And now if you press the Control key, your palette will stay as is. And if you want to use this palette multiple times, you can click this down arrow here and click Save Shade and now it'll show up in the list. So how this works is your brush will only modify pixels that are the same color as the colors in this list. So if I try to draw out here in this white space, it's not going to do anything because white isn't in my palette. But if I draw in the gray area, you'll see I'm actually changing stuff. How this actually works is, if you're using a mouse, you can think of the left mouse button as shifting the colors leftward on the palette. If you use the right mouse button, it'll shift the colors rightward. And if you're using a tablet, pressing down will move the colors to the left. If you don't have a right mouse button option, you can always press the X key on your keyboard to invert the palette. In this case, this will move the darker shades to the left, and the lighter shades to the right. So if I scribble in one section on this blob, no matter how many times I go back and forth in the same area, it's only going to shift the shade of the pixels once. Now you can see the color of my cursor is an even lighter shade now. If I move out of this area into the darker part of the blob, my cursor goes back to the color of the lighter blob that I just drew. If I draw a second blob and scribble over the first blob that I drew, you can see the first blob gets brighter in the place where I'm scribbling. Now if I invert my palette and I start doing the same thing but with the darker colors, You'll see that everywhere I draw becomes one shade darker. Let's revert it back to its original state. Now that you know how it works, let's draw a rock. I'm going to make my brush just a little bit bigger, because I find a little bit less precision makes the effect of shading ink really shine. What I'm going to do is pick a shape that I want this rock to be, and think of where the light is going to be coming from. So I think I want this rock to be shaped kind of like a pedestal. You know, flat top, kind of steep sides, kind of like a tree stump. And let's say we've got the light coming from the top left. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to select the top edge and work on this one side at a time. So let's start by doing a big blob where the light is going to be brightest. I'm going to draw this blob in one big stroke. Then I'm going to do it again, but I'm going to go out a little bit further. You can see I missed a spot here in the middle, and that's okay. There's something to be said about not worrying too much about individual pixels when using shading ink. Now I'm going to invert my palette by pressing the X key, and we'll draw some low lights on the other side of this region. This is looking really simple and flat, but we're going to leave it here for now. I'm going to invert my selection and start working on the side of the rock. So I think the side of the rock is going to be getting hit by light here, and have less light over here around back. So once again I'm going to invert my palette with the X key, and let's just start drawing some basic light blobs. We're going to start from the edge and work our way inward a bit. Then we're going to do it again, starting partway through the highlighted spot, going a little bit past, 
and then invert and do the low lights again. And let's add an even darker spot on the very back. So now if I deselect, you can see we've got a very smooth looking rock. Now is when we can start to have a little bit of fun. I'm going to add a little bit more of a highlight on the front of the rock, but leave a bit of an edge to show that the light is sort of fading as it curves around. And I'm going to try to make the side of the rock look a little bit more textured. We can do that by zigzagging over some of the edges we've already drawn, intentionally leaving some gaps. Now I'm going to invert my palette and do it again, until I feel like this rock is nice and textured. Kind of just alternating dark and then bright and then dark and then bright. And making sure to leave gaps like these to give things a little bit more texture. Now let's start working on the top side. I'm going to try to give this a bit of a radial texture, like lines coming out from the center, not rings like a tree stump. So I'm starting with a dark shade, and I'm going to draw lines out from the center, kind of like flower petals. And you can see I'm going over the edge a little bit into the side, but that's okay. Let's do another dark shade flower, but offset from the first one. And this is looking a little too dark now, so I'm going to add some highlights back by inverting and doing the same thing. And you can see I've mostly been avoiding touching this edge too much in order to leave some distinction between the top and the side faces. Based on where the highlights are in this picture, it actually looks like the light is coming more from the, the front and left a little bit rather than just the top left. And that's okay. I didn't actually have a plan. I'm just kind of winging it and seeing what comes out. And so I'm mostly okay with this. I'm just going to add some shading behind these little tufts of grass now. So sticking with the dark shade, just going over some spots here. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now let's switch to the grass layer. And you'll see, because I don't have green in my selected palette right now, if I draw on the grass, nothing's going to happen. So I'm going to click and drag to select my greens. And you can see they're already in the right order, so I don't have to mess with it. These tufts of grass are very small, so I'm going to shrink my brush back down to one pixel. So just like before, I'm going to start with some highlights based on where the light seems to be coming from. And some of the highlights won't be there in the end. I'm just getting a sense of the shape of these tufts of grass. I'm literally discovering this as we go. I'm going to invert the palette again by pressing X and start defining the shape a little bit with some low lights. I don't have much in the way of instruction on this as I'm just kind of winging it. And of course, if you go over something and it doesn't look so great, just hit Ctrl Z. This is digital art after all. And here I'm going to take some of the highlights on the back pieces of grass and darken them equally to suggest that they're further away from the light. And yeah, here we go. We've, we've drawn a rock. We've drawn some grass. We started with a super flat blob with some other super flat blobs, and now we've got this. Maybe you want to try to draw a more round rock, like a boulder. Or one with like a face in it or something. You can honestly do a lot with this, just playing with light and dark. If you want to try this yourself and share what you've come up with, feel free to upload your drawing to Imager or something and post a link in the comments. If you like this tutorial, if you want me to do more stuff like this, please let me know. This is the first of this sort of thing that I've done, so I honestly don't know how much demand there is for something like this. But yeah, thank you for watching, and I hope I was able to help you learn something. Have a nice day.